The argument from fine-tuning basically says that the number of different properties and variables and constants that the universe could have is so vast that the likelihood that the universe would have exactly the right properties for life is extremely small. So small that it is best explained by the existence of some conscious entity that fine-tuned the universe specifically for the existence of life. However, if this universe is just one of many universes, and there are enough universes in the multiverse to cover every single possible configuration a universe could have, then the existence of even the rarest universes becomes probable. Not only probable, but inevitable. However, William Lane Craig seems convinced that he's found a formulation of the fine-tuning argument that gets around the multiverse hypothesis. So let's have some lulls. By far, most of the observable universes in a world ensemble would be worlds in which a single brain fluctuates into existence out of the vacuum and observes its otherwise empty world. So what Craig seems to be saying is that universes in which a brain could spontaneously generate and observe an otherwise empty universe would be way more common than universes that look like ours. Now I have absolutely no clue where he gets that idea, so I'm very skeptical about it, but let's say for the sake of argument that he's right. Thus, if our world were just a random member of a world ensemble, we ought to be having observations like that. Since we don't, that strongly disconfirms the world ensemble hypothesis. So chance is also not a good explanation. It follows that design is the best explanation of the fine-tuning of the universe. He seems to be arguing here that because space brain universes are vastly more common than universes that look like this one, that it's vastly more likely for you as a conscious entity to find yourself in one of those universes rather than a universe that looks like this. Therefore, the fact that we do find ourselves in this universe cannot be explained by chance. It is better explained by a designer. Now, not only is this a complete non sequitur, he also seems to be moving the goalpost here. This argument is no longer even an argument about the probability of the existence of this universe as the standard formulation of the fine-tuning argument is. If the multiverse contains so many different universes that the existence of every possible universe becomes inevitable, then the existence of this universe is inevitable. Rather, he seems to be arguing not that it is improbable for this universe to exist, but rather that it is improbable that we as conscious entities would find ourselves in this universe, given that we are vastly outnumbered by universes inhabited by space brains. He's arguing that it's vastly more likely that you would find yourself living as a space brain than living here on Earth. But if we live in a universe in which every possible universe is accounted for, then even if you did find yourself in the apparently more probable circumstance of living as a space brain in one of these other universes, this universe would still inevitably exist. Since that's the case, why would its existence need a designer? And if all possible universes exist, including this universe, a universe with an Earth inhabited by seven billion people, then it is inevitable and unavoidable that at least seven billion of all of the conscious entities in the entire multiverse would find themselves living in this universe. And that's the case regardless of how outnumbered we are by space brain universes. If this universe with at least seven billion people living in it must necessarily exist among all of the possible universes in the multiverse, then the fact that we are extraordinarily outnumbered by all of these other kinds of universes is completely irrelevant to the fact that this universe must still necessarily exist.